Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty and happy International Scrapbooking Day. In honor of this wonderful holiday for us crafters, I have created a brand new product line and it is bigger than what I've usually been doing. So here is what I've got going on. I'm trying to get it all on camera. We will switch to the overhead view in just a moment so that you can see this a little bit closer. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you found me. I have been on a quest to learn some digital software skills in an attempt to start designing my own paper crafting products. And some of that is going smoothly and some of it is a challenge for sure. But I am here this month with this beautiful full paper crafting collection for you in an eight and a half by 11 size so that you can print from home. And we'll talk a little bit more about those things as I show off this line. So let's switch to the overhead camera and uh, get started showing off the details. I am very happy to introduce you to my new Fly High collection. And as a start, I will say that this collection started off with these two concepts. There was this sky-inspired print that I had been playing with, and that led me to create some kites. And from there, I built a collection of colorful, happy icons and images to go with this May collection. So let's take a look at all of the pieces included in this kit. We have two sheets of embellishments. You will notice here that these sheets have some light outlines around many of the icons, and that is to give you guides for fussy cutting. However, if you don't like fussy cutting and you own an electronic die cut machine, I do have files that eliminate those black outer lines and allow you to cut it with a print and cut feature on your electronic die cut machine. Now I do own Cricut and Silhouette and I know for sure that these files will work on, on those platforms. And if you need more information on how to do print and cut, I will link you up to a video for that. I do have my embellishments already printed and cut out. All right, for the general patterns of paper, I have six patterns. We have a lovely rainbow ombre. We have a diagonal stripe that goes from the beginning of the rainbow outwards and then flips and repeats on the ends of the paper too. So this is not a traditional rainbow print. It has its own little quirk to it, its own little personality to it, I should say. I have these sweet little hand-drawn whimsical florals here. This was an experimental piece that came from playing with triangles when I was playing with the kites and I just liked it so much that I wanted to include it in this collection and I think having this is taking the place of like a polka dot um, and having this whimsy in here with a mix of more artistic prints I think is a fun combo. So I enjoyed this piece and adding that in. And then we have a much larger scale print with the kites here. And then of course we are back to this lovely cloud print. Now like I said all of these are on eight and a half by eleven um, papers so that you can print from home. You could even send them out to a print service and my printer is not the best printer in the world. I do have a little bit of graininess happening in my print, and this is the part where I'm still learning some of the skills that I need for being a digital designer. I just want to give you a heads up that when you're printing at home, you may encounter some interesting quirks to the print industry. One being that every single printer ink is going to be different your computer system is going to interpret the screen colors to the printer colors differently. And screens often tend to be much brighter and more vibrant than print colors. So, and I found that to be true when I printed out my papers because the 
the saturation of the colors did surprise me because they look much more vibrant on my screen. So again, I am learning. And because this is a learning process for me, that is why I am offering these items up to you for free so that I can go to school in, in an affordable way and also provide you guys with some fun stuff. So that is, I'm just so excited about about this, especially this collection, having come up with a complete collection. It did take me a little while and I did have some challenges, but I really enjoyed it. So these are all the solid colors of um, papers, which I say solid, but they do have a texture to them. And some of the texture is showing up a little bit better than others. So again, me learning uh, print versus screen imagery is something that I am working on. So like this red and orange are the same um, process of creating the, the texture, but you can see that it's much more subtle on the red print than it is on the orange. So I've got one sheet of each color that I've got in this collection. So it goes through the rainbow, but it doubles up on blues because I wanted a specific blue to um, work in my sky. And you'll notice that this blue actually leans more green than what it looks like here. And again, that's because different processes are creating a different final result. So I do have all of these um, papers in a downloadable zip file so that you can, well, the embellishments too, the whole collection is in a downloadable zip file on my blog, which is craftysoup.com. And I will link you up below so that you don't have to remember that. And you can grab this collection and I hope you love it. And I hope you make some interesting projects out of it. And before we go, we still have to look at all of these embellishments. So when I'm working on my embellishments and the paper collections, I want to keep a couple things in mind. One, how expensive is it gonna be for you to print at home? Cause I know printer inks are not cheap in a lot of cases. So I do try to keep bigger or more open prints balanced out with um, more more colorful prints so that you can print out the pieces that you can use in your projects uh, without breaking the bank. So if you don't want every single colored piece, you can print each color individually and just decide which ones you want. And to that end, let me say, I do have included with the download is this swatch file and, it, and it's called swatches. And you can go ahead and print this and see how the colors look coming out of your printer versus what they look like on your screen and decide if you like them to go ahead and print full sheets of the parts that you like. So I'm hoping that you will find this helpful to help you um, kind of hone in on which pieces are going to work for you. So that is included. All right, and if we take a look at the at the cut apart embellishments, you'll notice that there's lots of goodies going on here. We have two banner pieces and these are sized to be about six inches. Let me double check once they're printed because that's another, <laughs> the sizing on the text. Oh, these are coming out closer to about seven inches total. So the sizing on the screen versus getting the sizing in the prints is something else I'm working on. But these are printed so that you can um, clip them, trim them, overlap them, and get a much longer banner piece going on. So if you are a 12 by 12 scrapbooker, you can still utilize these. And then included is three textured clouds, and I'm not sure how well they're gonna show up on camera, but there is a kind of cloudy gray texture to those. We've got a rainbow with its own cloud. There, there is one journaling spot in each of the colors, except for the lighter blue, because the two blues showed up very similarly when I printed them out. So I um, 
I didn't think two blues was going to be necessary in, in this format. Then there's a variety of tags. I've got a repeat of some of the paper prints onto the tags. So we have um, the diagonal stripes. We have the ombre rainbow. This ombre rainbow is more saturated than this ombre rainbow for two reasons. One is that you can use these together without it blending in too much. And two, when you're printing a pattern paper, it's gonna use a lot more ink. So I wanted to keep this one more desaturated to help save you money. So those are the reasons for that. We have this one had some of that same uh, texture as the solid papers, but um, it's not showing up as well on my printed version. So that may be the case with you too, but that is the same color as the, the sky pattern paper. There we go. Those are the same colors. And then I've got one tag with that kite icon, one tag with the florals, and then this one has the same cloudy texture to it as the actual clouds. So those are all the tags. Uh, I feel like there's one missing. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six tags. Then I always do some circular embellishments. And if you're fussy cutting these, you can use a one inch circle punch and punch them out so that you don't have to fussy cut them because fussy cutting circles can be a challenge. So I've sized these specifically for a one inch circle punch. So <laughs> it's gone flying. So I've got three of the same kites. We've got six flowers. There's two of each color here. And I made these separate colors from the floral pattern paper, again, so that you can work them together or use them independently. And then I have three of the um, wonky pie shape wedges. So those are there. And then I really enjoyed making these. I have got some phrase ephemera for you. And I will bring them up. This one says fly high in the peachy orange and light blue. We've got over the rainbow. If you can see the word the, it's overlaid with our letters. And of course you can see the rainbow of colors. And then this one says bright days in, let's see if I can get the focus. There we go. Bright days in the red and the darker blue. All right, that is this collection in honor of International Scrapbooking Day. So I do release freebies every month, which usually includes a sheet of embellishments and one or two sheets of pattern paper. So this big collection is really fun. The other thing I release every month is a cut file of some sort. Sometimes it's a collection of smaller images, sometimes it's one large image. This time I definitely coordinated my images to go with the pattern paper collection. And let me peel and reveal what we've got and hopefully we'll have some clean cuts and nothing will be stuck. And indeed, it looks good. So I'm going to save this and let me tell you why in just a moment. But let's go through this a little bit. I have a traditional, and we can take these parts out actually. You can keep these and re inlay them. Because I'm using white paper, one of the ideas that I have is that I can color the white paper with sprays or ink blending and come up with my own colors. So you can keep and reuse these wedges. These wedges, however, are made to um, back the cut files, which means they are larger than the opening. So you can glue them behind these um, spines, I guess you could say, in this pie shape. So that's why we have these separate pie wedges. And of course, I couldn't uh, do without my wonky pie wedges, so I have one of those as well. We have the kite with the accompanying little um, bows for the kite tail. Now, I didn't create a kite tail because getting those thin cuts 
can go wrong too often, so I didn't want to go there. Instead, I'm going to recommend that you use some kind of fiber, um, some twine, baker's twine, or something along those lines would make a great tail for your kite, and then you can glue your bow pieces onto that. I do have those quirky flowers here, including all of the little pieces to build up the layers. After I go over all of these pieces, I will color up a few things so that you can see a little bit better of what I'm talking about. And then we have the kite pieces, and you can cut these individually out of colors of cardstock or pattern papers, and then these are made to layer up on top of this backing. Um, the reason I said to keep this is if you're trying to realign these wonky wedges, or even if you just want the inners of the pie wedges, you can use this as a template. So you can place it down on your project and then one at a time, take each piece and glue it into place onto your project. And once it's glued into place, then you can remove the template and everything will be aligned exactly as you see it. Now you don't have to do that. You can do it by hand and align it however you want. But if you keep this, then you can get that same alignment spacing if that's what you want. Okay, I am back with my colored elements. And one thing that I should say about these little florals, let me um, bring them up just a little bit closer. So these are made to layer and they actually go in order from top to bottom. So this is gonna be the inner part of your flower center, which will be a yellow or orange if you want a traditional flower. The next layer is the outline. And if you notice in the pattern papers, there it is. You'll notice that the flowers have an outline to them, kind of that cartoon style flower. So if you color the next part a dark color, that will be your outline. And then this will be your main floral color. And then again, we have the outline layer. So when you layer these up at this size, um, these layers are a little bit fine. If you make them any smaller, you may not get the layer, um, the layer imagery that you're looking for. But if you make them larger, it will actually be easier to see these outlines. So let me bring it up again. Can you just barely see the outline around that flower? So that is the idea of these. And I actually did scale these down to get them all to fit uh, on one cutting mat. So these were originally designed to be a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and finish layering our flowers up here. So there, I hope you can see the idea of how these parts and pieces layer together. And then these are the wedges that I mentioned. So these were the ones that are just kind of the leftovers from um, the cut. And I just colored these with some ink. It was not anything professional. I just kind of swiped some ink on there to get some color. And then these ones are the backer pieces. So so you should be able to see now, if I put this on top, it'll slightly overlap those edges, which means you can, you can get some glue going behind these and be able to back all of your cut files. And that gives you a little bit more depth than if you inlay the pieces. So it's just a very slightly different look. And again, these were designed at a slightly bigger size. So the overlap is pretty minimal at this scale. If you scale them up, you'll get more overlap and you'll have a little more success with backing them. So that is the cut file that goes with our paper collection. Now I often release a layout, scrapbook layout sketch as well. However, because this took me longer than I expected, I won't have that up for uh, probably a week or so, knowing what else is on my schedule. But that will be coming to go along with this collection as well. 
If you have any questions or comments on this, you can drop me a note below here on YouTube, or you can always email me at misty at craftysoup.com, and I will pop that up on the screen so you can see that. It will also be in um, the show notes down below so that you don't have to remember. You can be sure to find it down there. Any questions, comments, um, I will do my best to help you out. Like I said, I'm learning, so I may not know everything, but I will certainly give it a try. So that is it from me for this exciting weekend of scrappy goodness. I will be back next week with more of my regularly scheduled videos. So until then, I hope you have an artful day.